All right, so I own two Anastasia palettes. I own the Modern Renaissance. It's as good as everyone says. I'm not gonna do a ton of swatching here. Everyone has swatched it. I've mentioned this a couple times in my blog. I'll put the links down below because I did do really in-depth swatches. Also talked about how, although this screams warm palette and it is, there's ways to really make really pretty neutral as well as cool toned looks out of this palette. So I really feel like this is probably one of the best, most well thought out palettes on the market and it performs beautifully. I love this. In fact, I love this so much that I've actually gone and purchased some of the Anastasia single shadows in shades that are in this palette to go in my Z palette. I love this thing. This was the limited edition um, master palette by Mario that Anastasia did at Christmas last year. I wish this had been permanent. I get it's a collab, but this is stunning. I like the shades, the matte shades that they have put in here. Um, I do think it really is as simple as picking one of these matte shades in your for your crease um, and one of these on your lid and you have almost a two-step look that looks gorgeous every single time. I like the shades that he put in here. I think this is a perfect complement to the Modern Renaissance palette because I think the two of them together give you pretty much endless looks. It really is a beautiful palette and I love it. I've taken this and the Modern Renaissance palette on uh, trips with me before and have really felt like I have endless amounts of ideas and inspiration. Um, they're two really good go-to travel palettes for me, so love that. Okay, and then last in this little front row, this is the Fiona Styles Artist Eyeshadow Palette. I'm bummed that she's no longer at Ulta. I hope she finds a new home um, to sell her products. This was one of the last products that was released, um, and I really, really like it. Um, my biggest challenge with this is a lot of the shades are deeper, so I do tend to pull for a transition shade from other palettes, but I really like these sort of warmer shades here, this plummy matte, this really interesting sort of yellowy uh, brown down here. Um, you've got a really pretty bright highlight shade here. You've got a cream all over cream shadow, which is perfect. You've got a really pretty taupe shade. You've got a gunmetal. You've got this sort of satin uh, taupe shade. And I'll show you both of these side by side because I did think were those shades duplicates of one another? Did you need both of them? And although I think they are similar, one is more purple based and one is more of a true taupey color. Hopefully you can see that there on the camera. The mattes in here are stunning. Uh, grab two of those. Highly pigmented, blend out really, really well. No issues with that. This highlight shade here is amazing. Like, so bright. This palette is great. I, I really do like it. It's nice and compact, which I appreciate. I like packaging like this. So I'm gonna hang on to this and hope that she finds a place where you guys can buy this. All right, let's talk Tarte. Up first is the Energy Noir palette. I bought this because I thought it would be a really good travel palette for me. And to be honest, it, it kind of is. It's got a really pretty blush down here. It has a really pretty shade that you could potentially use as a face highlight. It's gonna be pretty intense, to be honest, as a face highlight, so I don't didn't reach for it a ton that way. It's got really nice mattes here, so you've got a matte cream, a matte taupe, a matte sort of lavender, a dark brown, a dark plum, and a black. And then you've got two lid shades here, which are very cool toned. Um, one is more taupe and one is more purple. Um, it is a really pretty palette. You are only gonna get cool tone looks out of this, just be aware of that. Um, I have used the blush as kind of a crease shade to warm up a look a little bit in the past. It's really pretty. I'm just not reaching for it and I think somebody else might enjoy it more. Tarte Pro To Go. I love this little palette. So I use this transition sort of crease and outer corner and then satin when I wanna deepen it up or even as a liner. This gold is stunning. Boss shade is amazing copper and then this cranberry shade. I mean, these three shades alone, the pigment on these is just freaking stupid. Like, just stupid. I mean, beautiful. So this is like a really good example of thinking through a small palette that will give you lots of looks because you can use the matte shades on their own to build a complete eye look and do an all matte. You can use the mattes and then really you've got three unique eye looks you can do here with gold, cranberry, or copper color. It's just a really well thought out palette and I've traveled with this a ton. I love how freaking compact it is yet it still has a little beer in there. This is just really, really well done. I really enjoy this. 
this is what I am calling my inspiration palette. This is limited edition. I think you can still get it. In fact, it may actually be on sale. It is the Make Believe in Yourself palette. These are pretty much all foiled eyeshadows with one matte up here, which is actually a really good matte to throw in the crease and then put one of these on the lid. It really does give you a very pretty look. I love this palette. This is the palette that just gives me some inspiration for color in ways that I don't normally wear color. I like that it gives you some some shades you might see in other palettes, like this taupe shade or some of these more neutral brown shades, but then it really kind of pushes you into purples and pinks and blues in a way that I think is very approachable. So I really like this palette. Um, they said this was a face highlighter. I am not a huge fan of the face highlighters from Tarte, to be totally honest. This will work as a face highlighter. It's got kind of a duochrome pinky gold shift or peachy gold shift to it. It would work as a face highlighter. To be honest, I haven't reached for it much as that. I've just used it mostly either on my eye or as inner corner highlight, but I love this palette. I really do. It just makes me happy. All right, next up is the original Tartlet palette. I got this off a of recommendation from my friend who loves matte eyeshadows, and I do like this one. I think it does, this is a good palette to reach for when I know I need a cool tone because I think it does a nice cool tone transition shade. Um, I like it when I want a very true neutral, not too warm, not too uh, cool look because I think um, Free Spirit, Force of Nature, and Wanderer really do give me that. I like that it's got these sort of pink, these plummy tones here in the middle. So I like this. This is one that I frequently will grab a few sparkly single shadows and this as my travel combo and I really like it. So hanging on to this. Tartlet and Bloom is a lot of people's holy grails for a reason. I also love this palette. I have used the absolute bejesus out of it. I love Sweetheart and Rebel. Um, I love Sweetheart in my transition, as my transition shade and Rebel in the outer corner and Leader to blended out. Um, I really like that they did this sort of warm toned row, this neutral row, and then this more cool toned row. It's worth the hype. It's worth what everyone says about it. This shade Funny Girl is gorgeous all over the lid. It is just the most perfect champagne color all over the lid. And like you said, Sweetheart and Rebel are two of my favorite mattes um, to use just in general, not just in this palette, but in general. Um, I love those two shades together. I think they are just beautiful. So um, yeah, this is going nowhere. All right, so this is a little Stila palette. This is, I think, the only Stila palette I own. This is the Perfect Me, Perfect You in medium tan. They did these little palettes based on skin tone. This was for medium skin. I like it. It's okay. I was hoping these were gonna be, this was gonna be a little more foiled than it actually was. Um, it's pretty on the eye. Don't get me wrong. I don't know, I used it. I didn't mind the looks I got with it, but I didn't like, I wasn't like gaga for it. So I do think I'm gonna pass this guy along. This is the only balm palette I have right now. I used to have another one that I actually um, decluttered probably last year. Um, this is the Balm Appetite palette. This one is interesting to me because, well, first of all, it's really cute. Eat your heart out. This flips down and you see the names and the shades. Um, the thing that I always have to remember with this palette is that the shades look darker in the pan than they show up on the eyes in real life. So it's not that they're not pigmented, they are, and they blend. So it's not that there's not pigmentation, it's just for some reason they look darker in the pan than they show up on the eye, and I can't figure out why that is. Um, so like, I looked at this and I was like, well crap, I don't have a good neutral transition shade. Well really, this one does it for me. Um, and we'll see how it swatches on the hand versus um, on the eye. but. You see what I mean? Like it's, it's not that it's not pigmented, it's there, it's just lighter and it blends out really well. So, I mean, I think if you're fair like me, you might really enjoy this palette. You just kind of have to always keep yourself, you always have to kind of remind yourself that like this steely gray that looks really dark really is a lot lighter. You can see that. So. I know a lot of people kind of didn't love this palette. Um, I actually really enjoyed the looks that are in there. I think it's kind of unique. I like the balm in general. So I do think I'm gonna hang on to this guy. This is my only Visart or Viseart, however you wanna say it, palette. This is 03 Bridal Satin. I will probably break down and buy another one, but I liked this one because it gave me interesting color range, I felt. So you've got sort of a light gold peach, a brown, a taupe, a silver, sort of a warm brown, some plums and purples, some blues and blacks. This is all part of their satin 
uh, collection. These are super pigmented and buttery. Um, they blend beautifully on the eyes, but this is definitely not a standalone palette. So this is one that you're going to grab and pair with something else to make an eye look. But that's okay. That's what these were meant for. They were meant to be super compact eyeshadow palettes for makeup artists. Um, so they weren't meant to be like look in a box kind of thing. It was meant to own several of them and use them all in conjunction with one another. So I really like this. I really should reach for it more than I do. I need to pull it into my collection, especially considering I spent the 80 bucks on it that I did. And then I think I want to pick up the matte one that everyone raves about and really play around with this and maybe even Paris Dude. So I feel like I want to pick up a few more of these to be totally honest. These are satin shades, I would say not metallics. So just bear that in mind. I do think there's a difference between that kind of texture. But yeah, I, I, I do enjoy this one. I just, I feel like I want to own a couple more and play with them all together. These are two palettes from BoxyCharm that came a couple months apart from each other. So this is Studio Pro on the go. It's a makeup line. They sent out two palettes. Um, one is Warm Up, which is an interesting balance of, I think, matte and shimmer shades. Really well thought out palette. I do like this palette. It's a good travel palette with neutral. I mean, it really is everything you need in a travel neutral palette. This is the Cool Down palette. So that was Warm Up and Cool Down. I don't want to say it was more my speed, but I really did enjoy the colors that were in here. I thought it was really, both of these palettes I thought were really well thought out and combined together. You have all the all the neutral and uh, cool looks you could possibly want. Pigmentation was great. Good quality, like these. I believe these are available for purchase on their website. I think they were like 40 bucks. This is a good example of why BoxyCharm is uh, good to sign up for because you get amazing palettes like this in your monthly box. All right, so we're gonna start pulling things from the back here. All right, so this is a Little Lorac palette. This was the Pink Champagne eye and cheek palette. This was available on um, Amazon. It was an Amazon exclusive. It's pretty. I just don't reach for it. The pigmentation's okay. I mean, it's not bad. And it is a full, you know, eye and cheek palette. You could certainly multitask these colors, but there's your blush, your bronzer, your highlight, as well as um, eyeshadow colors. But you can also use these as eyeshadow colors. I mean, it's a good palette. I just don't find myself reaching for it. I think it can find a better home. This is the Urban Decay Naked Basics. This is a matte palette that I finally broke down and purchased after not being sure how I felt about it. I just think they made a couple of faux pas in color selection. So I think these two shades are far too similar and I think they should have done a lighter either warm peach or a transition shade, something else because I feel like these are too similar. I also feel like really these three, I mean, whereas I do think there's difference in pigmentation, I also feel like, do I need all three of these to make a look? I guess is what I'm saying. And I don't feel like I do. I think the quality is there. I like the matte nature of all of these shades. The shade blow up here is a little bit of a satin. So I like that for inner corner or if you want a more satin shade on your brow bone. Like I said, pigmentation's there. Just feel like I look at it and I go, why are these two shades both in here? And why are these two shades both in here? Why didn't you give me something a little different. Yeah, I'm gonna hang on to it and really see how I put it to use. This is newer to my collection. I didn't buy it when it first came out. Um, I only bought it a couple months ago, so. This is the Becca Jaclyn Hill palette that was discontinued. I bought it before it, we had the cancellation. It's okay. I think I probably got the dud palette as it were. I heard people saying some were good, some were bad. This one was just okay. I'm gonna pass this one on. I just don't reach for it. This is the Venus Lime Crime palette, or sorry, this is the Lime Crime Venus palette. This is my sister's favorite palette. She gave this to me. It is really pretty. I actually mean to pull this in this fall and play around with it more. I could probably use it during the summer too. She loves, like me, really warm tone looks uh, with blue eyes sometimes. I think it really makes our eyes pop. Um, and this is a really cool palette. I think this shade Shell is really cool. It's like a peach with a gold shift to it. It's really, really kind of cool and unique. The mattes in here are really pretty. So yeah, I'm excited to play around with this a little bit more. Gonna keep this one. Good sentimental value as well as I think it's just some unique shades. Okay, Buxom is an eyeshadow brand that I think doesn't get nearly enough attention. These are two build your own palettes that I have done. So basically how this little system works is you pick out the shades you want and then there's a little tray at the end that slides out 
and then you load your shadows into the tray. So what I like about that too, is if you start to really use up a shade, it's very easy to replace just one shade. And they have some really interesting colors. So this one I did more warm toned eyes and looks from, this is a really pretty sort of goldy peach color that is really pretty. And then this mint color was kind of my surprise color. And this is like, almost a duochrome sort of blue green sh or yellow shift to it stunning and then the mattes are beautiful like these matte shadows blend so well um, and they are so pigmented I don't know if you can see that there but they are beautiful love this palette and then the other set that uh, the other shadow set that I put together was more sort of cool neutral colors peach transition shade is beautiful this is a very foiled sort of taupey brown color it is stunning I love that shade and then this purple actually has a really interesting purple uh, blue duochrome shift to it um, that is probably one of the more interesting colors in my collection. I love that shade on the lid. So yeah, I really like these. I think uh, sometimes building your own palette can be a little intimidating. They do definitely have pre-made palettes if you don't want to build one yourself, but um, I really enjoy the ones that I have built and I get, get, made some really pretty eyeshadow looks out of them. So the Rock Mega Pro 2, I missed out on one. I didn't want three, so this is the two. I think the thing that bugs me about this is I hate the blue background. I really think it throws my sense of colors off quite a bit, but I really do love, you've got two matte rows and two shimmer rows here. Um, it's got this amazing shade called Olivine. Like I would almost buy this palette again just for this shade. It is like this olive pewter taupe, I don't even know what to call it, antique bronze. Prosecco is stunning. It is a beautiful champagne. I love these sort of warm shades. You've got some really interesting berries and like cooler tone purples. I like this palette. I'm gonna hang on to it. It was limited edition, but I've heard you can recently purchase it on HSN. So if you're interested, go check that out. I think it was HSN or QVC. Okay, so the last three things in here are my Vice palettes from Urban Decay. This is the original Vice palette. Um, I recently pulled this in to play with it um, for a week and create a bunch of looks. What I started to realize is that a lot of shades that I used to think were great are really pretty chunky. It could be that it's an older palette um, and it's starting to go, but it also could be that I just, I feel like shadows have really elevated themselves, especially in the past several years. Um, these two shades down here though, never mind, and Echo Beach are still probably some of my favorite satin shades of life. I freaking love these two shades completely, but I also don't feel right giving this one away to someone. It's just had too much love and it's a little too old. These two are where it gets a little trickier. I think this is Vice 3. Vice 2 was Lime Green. I don't own this one. This is Vice 3. This one was interesting to me because for the first time, um, she went and put a row of mattes, which I really appreciated here. So I liked that. I thought there were some really pretty um, satin shades in here as well. A really cool duochrome called Freeze. That was really, really pretty. The shade Lucky is a stunning copper, really performs well. Um, this shade Alchemy is a gorgeous sort of purple cranberry shade leans a little bit more raspberry and then this shade sonic is probably more of your traditional cranberry shade i mean really pigmented really pretty um so i did like the pigmentation on this palette quite a bit um less chunky glitters in here and more um i would say satins and metallics there are a few shades that i didn't love so much this shade this navy shade didn't do much for me to be totally honest um, this green is actually really pretty. It's very pigmented, very green. I like this one. I, I'm tempted to keep it because I do feel like it has some more unique shades in it. And I also feel like I could make a whole look out of this palette. And sometimes that's not the case with the Vice palettes. I, I really do think I want to keep this. In fact, holy crap, I've never even taken the plastic off. Oh, so satisfying. And now it looks brand freaking new. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, okay, I'm tempted to keep this one. I want to look at this other Vice palette and maybe just keep one of them. All right, so this is Vice 4. The packaging on this is probably my favorite packaging in my collection. I mean, it's just this holographic green to pink spider web. I mean, it's just, it's cool. There's no, there's no two ways about it. It does have two shades, um, 
flame and arctic that are more of those glitter shades well i guess yeah, I got a few of those glitter shades in here that I don't love quite as much from them. This shade Beatdown is a really cool sort of cobalt purple shade. I mean, it's like, it's really pretty and purple. I do like this green quite a bit. That is a stunning freaking green. Like, um, this Firebird shade down here is very pretty, but I would put this over a sticky base because it does have a lot of glitter in it. It's almost like their moon glow formula. I'm, gonna, I'm getting rid of one. I think I'm going to keep these two. I think there's colors in here. When I know I want an interesting color or an interesting pop of color, this tends to be where my brain goes to think, okay, let's look at my vice palettes to see what's in there. Um, I think I definitely prefer this one the most, but there's some really interesting shades in here. I'm not going to lie, the packaging is stunning. It's also may, might be weighing me a little bit on this, but um, I think I'm going to keep these two. We'll get rid of the other one. All right, so that is this drawer completely empty. Mm -hmm.